only shine a light to a darkened world Always live the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more
may shine a light to a darkened world And always live the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more exciting topic. It's a topic that we would use the Bible to speak to us today. So we'll speak through the word of the living God. But before we go any further, let's pray. Father, Lord, today we are entering your word. And Lord, we pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. And Lord, not only that we pray for these, but we ask, Lord, that after we would have studied your word today, that we would incline our air unto wisdom and, Father, live the way you want us to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Those who are watching, I um, would like to say thank you for joining us this morning. It's a joy to always have you with us. As we begin, I'd like to um, ask you um, something. Can you, at this present time, imagine your favorite town or city? Try to imagine whether it is France, um, Paris, part of Spain, um, Castries in St. Lucia, um, St. George's in Grenada, um, you know, Kingston in Jamaica. Doesn't matter where your favorite town is. Can you imagine um, these towns without potholes, without traffic, without pollution, or without any crime or violence of any kind? The truth is, it is impossible to imagine any city without traffic. However, the Bible tells us of a city which streets are paved with gold and within its tall within its tall walls were made with pure jasper that 
won't not even one wall is short everyone is tall imagine in that city there will be no more coughing no sneezing or no one coming down with the flu or what we call the common cold imagine a place with no arthritis no niggeritis <laughs> as they say or a better word a nicer word for it they say ethnic deficiency <laughs> um you know a place where we don't get tired we don't get weary we don't get drowsy a place where everyone will be in perfect health and everyone will enjoy each other's company i mean I've, i think i have paint the picture of a perfect city but the question this morning is would you like to visit that city someday well the truth is not only can we all visit that city but every one of us can live in that city someday but before I go further and through the Bible, the Word of God, discuss more of that city. Would like to listen to a song, one of my favorite songs, that came out from the Pillars of Faith. That was um, that is a wonderful initiative of the Seventh Day Adventist um, station called. Well, it's a TV. They they run a TV station as well as a radio station, three ABN. And the name of the song is, I have fixed my eyes. I have fixed my eyes. Just um, stay tuned as we listen to this beautiful song. I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. And here I mean to stand until God gives me more light. And Until he comes, I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. I have set my course on the narrow way. On the narrow way For I know the time is close at hand For which I watch and pray And that is today, today, today until he comes I have set my course on the narrow way, on the narrow way. Even so, Lord, come quickly, this is my first.
Such a beautiful song. I fix my mind on an other place, on an other time. God be praised. Um, we all um, want something better in life, you know, a better place. We all yearn for a better place. But at this time, we will take a short um, promotion. Um, and then we'll come back and we will greet those who are here with us, um, you know, watching and greet our viewers and, you know, say hello to you. So at this present time, we'll just take a short break again as we go through uh, another promotion. Coming. Beginning August 19, 2018 in Plains St. Patrick, right next to the Plains Roundabout, under the Big Green and White Tent. The Northern Zone of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists presents The King is Coming Gospel Explosion 2018 with young and dynamic evangelist Pastor Shonis Isidore. A crusade with a different, press-centered, family-oriented, youth-focused, accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Questions answered. Political mayhem. In a world filled with challenges as never seen before. Time, 7 p.m. nightly. Sabbath, 9 a.m. Come, lay your burdens at the feet of the cross. Come and be blessed. Come, Come meet, meet the, the King. King. Beginning August 19, 2018, in Plain St. Patrick, right next to the Plain St. Patrick. Make it a date and see you there. I would like to welcome Sister Mariana George, a wonderful lady, mother in Christ, you know, love young people. Sis, may God continue to bless you and thanks for watching. We have Clement Peters. Clement, thanks for watching and being with us this morning. We have my mother, um, Catherine Isidore, in the house. Thank you um, for watching. And we have Shemin, or Shemin. Shemin, thank you for watching and being with us this morning. And please remember to share the page, like it, and invite a friend um, to watch with us this morning. Programs like these are very um, exciting, <clears throat> and we do not want to you know, receive the joy only for ourselves. Pastor Gulaman, 
Um, Pastor Chad Gulaman is in the house. Um, Pastor, thank you for gracing us for your presence this morning. Um, Saints of God, we are talking um, and discussing is heaven real? Um, the first question I would like to ask and answer from the Word of God is who is the architect and the builder of this incredible city? Um, when we look at scripture, we realize and it becomes clear that God is the one who is the builder of that city. Actually, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10, um, the writer of the Hebrews, which many biblical scholars um, believe to be Paul, says, For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So therefore, um, Paul says that um, those faithful individuals were looking for a city whose architect, you um, notice the word architect, architect and builder is God. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it's 16, sorry, it says, instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Notice, so therefore, in, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And when we go further, um, earlier into the um, New Testament, John chapter 14, verse 1 through to 3, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. So this morning we realize that God is the builder and the architect of this awesome city. The Bible makes it clear that God is building an awesome and a huge city for, its people, for his people. It is as real as any city in the world. The city that God is building is as real as St. George's in Grenada, Castries in St. Lucia, Port of Spain in Trinidad, any other beautiful city, Paris, London, um, you know, any other beautiful city around the world. Heaven is as real as that city. The second question I would like to ask this morning is this, where is this amazing city? Where is this amazing city? The Bible in Revelation chapter 21 verse 2 has the answer. What is the answer? The Bible says, Then I, John. So who um, said that John? John says, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, out from heaven, as a bride adorned for a husband. In First Kings two, First Kings chapter eight, verse twenty-eight and thirty, the Bible says, "O Lord my God, here in heaven your dwelling place." So where is this great city at this moment? The holy city is now under construction. The holy city is in heaven. Now, how does the Bible describe this amazing city? In the Bible, in Revelation chapter 1, 21 verse 2, and I pray God that you'll be writing those various texts down so you could do your own individual study. The Bible says, the city is called by name. And in Revelation chapter 21 verse 2, the name of that city is called New Jerusalem. Now, what is the size of the city? How big is the city? The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. 
And he measured the city, the Bible says, with a reed. 12,000 furlongs. Revelation 21, 16. The city is a perfect square. Its perimeter is 12,000 furlongs, which is equivalent to 1,500 miles or um, 1,500 miles. It is 3,300, sorry, 75 miles long on each side. So the city is 375 miles long on its side. Let's now talk about the walls. The angel measured the walls using human measurement. And it was 144 cubits thick. Now, the walls were made of jasper. And you can find these measurements um, in terms of the size of, of thickness of the walls in Revelation 21 verse 17 and Revelation um, and, and also verse 18 of the same Revelation 21. Now, a wall standing at 144 cubics, that is 216 feet high, surrounding the city. Now, the wall, remember, is made of solid jasper with a radiance and beauty beyond description. Think of it. Nearly 20 stories high and made of solid jasper. What's about the gates? The Bible said the city had a great high wall with 12 gates. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The 12 gates were of 12 pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Again, scripture reference, Revelation 21, 12, verse 13, and verse 21. Let's talk about a foundation because every building, every city has a foundation. The wall of the city had 12 foundations. And the foundations were, were, were de um, decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second of sapphire, the third of agate, and the fourth of emerald, um, the fifth of onyx, the sixth of ruby, and on and on and on. Again, okay, our scripture reference is Revelation chapter 21, verse 14, and verse 19, 20. The city has 12 full complete foundations, each one made of a precious stone. Every color of the rainbow is represented. So at a distance, the city will appear to be resting upon a beautiful rainbow. Now, we have discussed the walls. We have discussed the foundation. Let's now discuss the streets. The streets of the city was made of pure gold, like transparent glass. Again, scripture reference, Revelation 21, 21. Now, how does the city appear? What is the appearance of the city like? The holy city was prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for a husband, shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. What a city! The city with all its precious stones, gold, diamonds, and so forth, will be lightened with the glory of God. Its, its breathtaking majesty and purity is compared to a beautiful bride dressed, adorned for her husband. With the 
our imaginations running wild in reference to that beautiful city. I think now it's the perfect time to take a pause and listen to another beautiful song by Alan Jackson when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day. Rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing. Beautiful song. What phenomenal feature of this majestic city assures every citizen of that city eternal youth and eternal health. What assurance do we have in that city that you would be forever young and forever strong? The Bible says in the mid of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22 verse 2. Take also of the tree of life and eat and leave forever. That was the counsel of God in Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. The tree of life bears 12 kinds of fruit is, and the tree is in the middle of the city and it brings on ending life and youth to all who eat from it. Even its leaves contains wonderful sustaining qualities. This tree will yield a new crop of fruit every single month. Wow. Next question. Is it true that this amazing city will descend on this earth? John says, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Again, Revelation 21, 2. Blessed are the meek, the Bible says, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. The righteous will be recompensed on the earth. Proverbs 11, 31. My friends, yes, the majestic holy city will come down to this planet to become the capital of the earth made new. All the same will have a home in this city. My friends, I can't wait. And like it is said, the whole saying goes, Oh, what a day that will be. Oh, what a day. At this present time, I have gotten the sad privilege of doing many funerals. Funerals are always sad. 
you know whether it be somebody who's a hundred somebody who's 70 somebody who's 50 40 or somebody who died in their youth none of us want to die we know they are according to the Bible it's appointed for every man to die but nobody wants to die well at least willingly but the truth is in heaven there will be no more pain no more suffering no more crying next week we will continue part two of this wonderful topic but for now let's just take a nice pause again to take our final song tears will never stain the streets of that city Thank you very much for watching and following with us. Remember this beautiful song that tears will never stain the streets of that city. No reefs on my mansion's door. And that's the hope the Christian has. That's the hope the person whose life is placed in the hands of Jesus has. No matter what you have done, no matter where you have been, no matter what mistakes in life that you may have done, whether they be genuine mistakes or whether they be deliberate, we serve a God who is faithful to save, who is willing to forgive. And whenever you accept his forgiveness, you will be part of that great kingdom. I'd I would love to see you next week as, as we discuss part two of Is Heaven Real? Thank you for staying with me um, today. Thank you for sharing and liking our page. We pray under God by God's divine grace that you would join us next week. Invite a friend. Invite a loved one. Let them know that Pastor's Corner, we're talking about heaven, the best place 
for everyone to be. May God bless you and do, do enjoy the rest of your day. Others to trust and love you more. 